In a previous video, we had talked about belts. And when combined with a pulley or shiv, how I can transfer force from a motor to a fan, blower, pump, or some other device. But in order for those to operate properly, I have to make sure that I have a match between the belt and the pulley or shiv. Now, let's stop right there. We talk about pulleys and shivs. And those two terms are used pretty commonly. Some people refer to them as pulleys, some refer to them as shivs. And the semantics sometimes get a little bit hairy on that. But when we talk about these, we're going to refer to them today as pulleys. But someone could come right up behind me and refer to them as shivs, refer to them as shivs. Just know that we're talking about the same thing. So what's important is that we have a good match between the belt and the pulley. Now the belt, when it's operated with the pulley, has to fit within the groove of the pulley. I don't want it sticking out, and I don't want it bottoming out in the bottom of this groove. And so the belts are identified by certain characteristics, and that's predominantly their width and their height. And then that width and, width and height helps me to match it to a pulley. And so in our belt video, we talked about the different types of belts, the FHP, the classical, the 358, and how there are standard dimensions for those types of belts. And so when selecting a pulley, we want a device that will operate within those dimensions. Now when we replace the belts, make sure that when I replace them with my pulley that I always put new belts on there. I don't want to put new and used together. You don't want to mix part numbers and always replace with the proper belt for that specific pulley. So the belt has to fit within the groove of that pulley. We don't want it bottoming out, and we don't want that sticking up from the top. And so the pulleys then are identified when I look at a catalog page, such as this page. This catalog page gives me the dimensions of the pulley. Now note, on this particular page, it says that that particular pulley is designed for 4L or A belts. So that's telling me which belts fit in this pulley. And they'll be identified by the characteristics that we had talked about previously with the belts. So I need to make sure then that I'm matching the type of belt with the proper pulley. Now when I look at pulleys, some of them are single. I only have one groove. Some of those pulleys might be double, such as these. Now these particular pulleys, that groove is fixed in that pulley. That groove can't be changed one way or the other. But some pulleys are what we call adjustable. This particular pulley, you know, notice that there is a set screw on top of here, and that set screw needs to be loosened, but I can adjust that pulley, making that groove wider, and the belt would ride lower in the groove. And so that can affect the speed that I would see on the device I'm operating on the end of, other end of that belt. 
by changing it the other direction, again, that groove changes. So it's going to affect the speed. So as I tighten this, it narrows this gap and the belt would ride higher on the pulley. And when it rides higher on the pulley, it will increase the speed of that belt. Always make sure, though, that you are tightening the set screw onto the flat. And there are two flats on here, so that gives me the opportunity of 180 degrees uh, between the variances that I see in that. Now this particular pulley, it's a two-groove pulley, fixed grooves. On this pulley, it has a removable hub. Now the purpose of the removable hub is so that I can use it on different shaft sizes. So I could use it on smaller shaft sizes or larger shaft sizes just by selecting the proper bore for that hub for the shaft size that I need. Now notice, there are two holes on this pulley, but I have four holes in the hub. Why is that? Two of the holes in the hub are strictly holes, while two of the holes are threaded holes such as here. Now the purpose of that is when I attach this hub to the pulley, I put it into the non-threaded holes and I line up the bolts to the threads in the pulley and then I tighten those bolts to that pulley so that I have a secure connection of the hub to the pulley. It's pretty tight in there now. If I try and pick this out, if I try and lift this hub out of here, it's too tight. I can't lift it out. So if I take these bolts and put those into the threaded holes, and I thread those in to the threaded holes, now the bolts help to pick or to pull that hub out of the pulley. So that will actually lift the hub right out. Now this particular pull, pulley, it's a double. I have two grooves in this, but this is also an adjustable pulley. And these two grooves adjust, the, adjust independently of each other. Now to try and adjust these, if I loosen this, this sub bolt in here, I can't turn it because there's a key in the keyway of this pulley. So now if I remove that key, it allows me to adjust the groove and I can adjust both grooves to whatever dimension that I'm looking for, but always remember then to reinsert the keyway back into that pulley. And once you've reinserted the keyway, then tighten the hex back into that to make sure it's secure and that nothing moves. So there are a lot of options that we have with pulleys. They have to match the belt that's being used, but the numbers of the belts and the identification in the catalog pages for the pulleys tell me which belts will fit which specific pulleys. Make sure that a good fit is achieved with the belt and the pulley, and a good fit is achieved when 
the belt does not bottom out in the pulley and the top of the pulley does not extend over the outside diameter of the pulley. Appreciate you being here. We hope to see you again at the Packard Academy. Thank <laughs> you.